Okay, we have here an integral on the board. We've got the integral from zero to one, x to the a minus one times one minus x, b minus one, ln x, dx. And I wanna drive a general formula for this. You'll notice we have this similarity here to the beta function, but we're multiplying in natural log x. And I'm gonna do some more problems on this. I'll do some actual examples later on, but right now I just wanna derive the formula for this thing here. So to start with, I'll create some kind of function Using the a value, we'll have, I'm gonna actually, actually this is just gonna be the beta function. So let's look at our beta function like this, where we're gonna focus, where the a is gonna be the input on this function. Now for what I'm doing here, we're gonna treat the b value as a fixed constant. So we're not, right, so the functions in terms of a, the b is just gonna be, you could actually just fix that to some number if you wanted to. But this thing, we have this set up like the beta function and our formula for the beta function is just gonna be gamma of A times gamma of B over the sum of those two. So gamma of A plus B. And then on this thing here, we can use Feynman's trick. We can differentiate this. Because what I'm trying to do is I wanna create this ln x back. And so we'll just do this kind of quick. Now with Feynman's trick, in this case, we really have no concerns at all because for the beta function, between zero and one, I mean, that's the beta function in this form. And with our a values, I'm gonna say our a value, we'll say a and b are gonna be greater than zero. For those values, we always have convergence in that region. So no problem differentiating inside the integral sign as a partial, so we'll do that kind of quick here. I'm just gonna differentiate this piece because this over here is gonna be a constant with respect to a. So we're just gonna bring that back. But when we differentiate this, what's gonna happen is natural log x is gonna pop out just from that formula. Now, in this case, x is a constant. So this is like this is like the case when you differentiate something like three to the x. When you do that, you get back three to the x ln three. Same kind of thing here, we get the ln x where x is a constant dx. And what happened is we got back exactly the integral we want but what we can do is we have kind of a known value here. I mean, if we knew what the constants were, and so now let's differentiate this with respect to A. When we do that, it's gonna be quotient rule. And also keep in mind, again, B is a fixed constant. So I can bring the B out in front and just differentiate all this stuff over here. So in this part, we're gonna get the derivative of gamma A, gamma A plus B, didn't play my space very well. I'm gonna make it work though. So then we got gamma A, derivative gamma A plus B, all over the denominator squared. So it's gonna be gamma A plus B all squared. So now what we need to do is we need to simplify this thing, particularly the problem is derivatives of the gamma function. Well, we have a nice way to handle the derivatives of the gamma function with the digamma function. So our definition of the digamma function let's say digamma of z, this is defined to be the derivative of the logarithm of gamma of z. So when you do this out, you're just gonna get one over gamma of z, then chain rule, derivative of the whole thing, you're gonna get gamma, the derivative of gamma z. And then we can just solve that for the thing we want. So just multiply by gamma z on both sides and we have derivative gamma z is gonna be gamma z digamma z. So we'll use this formula right here to get rid of these derivatives that we don't really know what to do with otherwise. So what's gonna happen with our formula? We got more space now. So gamma B again, constant way out front. And then for our derivatives, we're plugging in. So we have, it's gonna be now gamma of A, um, di gamma of A, then gamma A plus B, then minus, that's just a gamma A, then this one, doing the same kind of thing with the formula, we get gamma a plus b, and then di gamma a plus b. Pretty long expression. And then this thing just stays the same. But now we can get some cancellation. Like gamma a plus b, we have that in common here, here, and here. So if we factor one out of the numerator, we can like cancel that with one of these. And then we also have gamma and a, in the numerator here that we can factor out. So like, let's factor that out here and group it with this. I'm kind of setting this up. So we have this here on the outside, and then let's bring this out front, just ordering it the way we want. 
the reason for me doing it that way is this piece right here that we just pulled out, this is actually just the beta function. This is defined to be beta AB, which would be like just this right here. But then we still have some stuff left over. We have here di gamma of A minus di gamma of A plus B. And altogether, that's gonna be our formula for this integral. So now you still might have difficulties getting a nice answer just because Sometimes gamma can be hard to calculate, di gamma can be hard to calculate. Basically, we can say that for integer values and half integer values, we're gonna be fine. And then there's also a lot of cases where we're gonna be good with um, sit, like the, the nice trig angles, like one third, one six, five six, all those kind of things, because we do have values for di gamma for like anything to like a sixth, I think, because when you use like the different formulas, they, they make sense because for the different formulas for the digamma function, they bring like cotangent or sine into it. So as long as you don't get to like pi over seven or something, this is gonna be fine. These can be a mess though. Like I don't know what gamma of one sixth is. The trick with that is sometimes you might not know what gamma of one sixth is, but maybe together with the B value, you can use the or the reflection formula in some cases. Maybe it won't work in other cases, but sometimes you can work with it that way. Okay, so it's a pretty amazing formula. I should have parentheses there just to say we're multiplying all this times this. And again, I don't think I said it clearly, but this is actually the derivative of the beta function. So we could kind of look at this right here as like derivative of the beta function a, a b. One other quick interesting thing is, even though notice that this formula is like completely symmetric, we could always interchange the a and b values without changing the value of the beta function, right? Well, it's not true of the derivative because if we switch the way we set it up and we take the derivative, it's not symmetric over here. So for example, if this value, if you have b here, you actually get a different value. So it is kind of important the way you order it before you take the derivative. Okay, there you go. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.